Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Florenza the Card Game, which I guess is the sequel or the re-implementation of Florenza the Board Game, which came out a couple of years ago, is a very popular game that's actually very hard to get, so hard to get a copy of, and I've been wanting to play for quite a while, but just have not been able to get my hands on a copy. Hopefully I'll get a copy this year at Essen. Really going to try hard to pick one up. But in the meantime, we've got the card game, which just came out, or actually I believe is coming out at Essen this year. I got an early copy of it. So let's start running through it. Okay, now in this game, we are rich aristocratic families in Florence trying to secure our family's legacy by building the greatest works the Renaissance era has ever seen. Of course, not the first time we've done it, not the last time. Let's see how this game handles that um, very popular, very rock solid theme. Now, the beginning of the game, you can see all the stuff is laid out. These are a bunch of actions we can do. These are a bunch of resources we can get. There's money up there. Right now, for the first round of the game, there's a whole bunch of, uh, what are these called? Monuments, I think? What's the term for these? Yeah, monuments that we could build if we have the right resources. And here's the artisans we need to actually build those things. So that's the setup. And everybody starts with one of each of the resources. One wood, one marble, one uh, textiles or carpet, one spices, one metal or silver, and one gold. Each of us start with one of each. Let's get those out of the way. And of course our hands are totally secret, but I'm not going to be able to keep all these cards straight if I don't start putting them face up. We also start with 300 florini, I think? or 300 bucks, and also we start with a hand of five Florenza cards. These are ideas we have that, of things that we could build. We have, you know, these are our inspiration. These are the things we're thinking about building. In addition, so there's two things we can build. We can be building our Florenza cards, or we could be building these monuments. These are first come, first serve. These are secrets, and no one else can, you know, nobody could. Somebody, I might be trying to save up for one of these. Somebody else might snake it out for under me, but these are the ones that are safe to build. Let's see, so these are my five starting. Jen started with five as well. The uh, Casamento, the Monte di Pietà, the Fabro, the Riato, and the Pretoria, well, whatever. I'm not even going to try. I should not try to do an Italian accent. I just embarrass myself. And you guys, you'd be embarrassed for me. Okay, so Jen's got her starting resources, her starting money, and she's got five Florenza cards as well. So, okay, let's go. Sequence of play. First thing that happens every turn is we draw new artists and monuments and Florenza cards. Now that's already happened in the first round, but that means at the beginning of every round, of which there are five, basically all, at the end of a round, all these artists are going to go away and most of these, the two most expensive ones stay, but all the other ones go away. And we have to discard all but one of our Florenza cards. So almost everything goes. So if we don't build it, it's gone very quickly. And... But, you know, in the first turn, everything's been drawn. So, we've already drawn up our artists, our monuments, and our Florenza cards. So now, we're going to take actions. Each round, like I said, of which there are five, players take turns, and we will do, at the beginning of the game, four actions. But over time, we might be able to do five or six or seven or even eight, potentially, actions around, depending on what we build. And those actions could be any combination of any of these. It could be the same one over and over again or whatever. So we could, you know, play one of our Florenza cards to build one of these wonderful things. We could build one of the monuments instead. We could grab a monument. If we can't afford to build one of these monuments right now, but we don't want somebody else to snake it out from us, we could reserve it, take it, so we aren't building it. We'll have to build it later. That, takes, that means normally it would take one turn to build this, but if I don't think I can do it, and Jen's going to grab it for me, I could take it and then was an action and build it later for a second action. We can also do the same for artists. If we think one of these artisans is going to disappear, we could, you know, somebody else is going to grab them, or we're just not going to have enough time, we could reserve one of them. We could also activate a location card. There's a whole bunch. That means go to these places and get their special benefit, which normally means getting resources for free or selling them for a lot of money or a couple of other special things down here. We could send out workers. That just means if you're desperate and you got nothing else to do, you can just make 50 um, bucks. We can also go to the market. That means we can do one action at the market. We can either buy one of these resources, sell one of them, or trade them with something in our hand two to one. And finally, we can search for inspiration, inspirato, which means if we don't like our Florenza cards, we could draw another one and hopefully get something we'd like to build. Okay, so Jen and I, we're gonna take turns. We're each gonna get at least four turns, but maybe more, doing these actions. I am the first player. I've got the captain of the people card, and I'm first. 
So what am I going to do? Well, let's look at what I could build here. Now, in my starting hand, let's see, I've got a, a Bibliotheca. This is worth five victory points at the end of the game if I build it. And it takes two wood and 150 bucks. So that's not bad. But I think actually, do I have it? Yes. Now this is, this is a guild. This is the Arte Magia, or I'm not gonna do that. It takes one wood, one gold, and 50 bucks. And what that means is at the end of the game, I will score three points for every workhouse that I have built. And coincidentally, the other three cards I had are all workhouses. Workhouses mean once you build them, for the rest of the game, at the end of every round, they will give you a resource. This one will give me an extra spice. This will give me an extra 100 uh, bucks. This will give me an extra carpet. So, this is a really nice thing to build, but I can wait on this. I don't have to build it right away. I think on my first turn, I want to get a couple of these workshops built because normally workshops aren't worth anything other than the resources they generate. But if I build this later, I have until the end of the game to build this. If I build this, this means every one of these I build will be worth three victory points. So that's pretty nice. So I think I'm going to want to build one of these. Let's see, in fact, if I can, I might want to build two. And now you notice, each one of these requires wood. Now remember, I started with one of every resource, so I've got one wood. So I think the first thing I want to do is I want to get some other wood. I get another wood, because that way I'll have two woods, which means I'll be able to build at least two of these workshops. So let's do that. Now there's two ways I can get wood, or any resource really. I could, quote, go to the market, which means I just come right up here and I pay 100 bucks. Remember, I started with 300. I could pay 100 bucks and buy the wood. That's okay, but there's a better way to go. Um, right underneath the wood, there's these location cards. There, this one, the Boscavolo, is a place where if I go here, I get a wood for free. I get to save 100 bucks. On the flip side, if I go here, I could sell a wood for 200 bucks. So you can see either one of these, get the wood for free, sell it for 200, is better than normally buying or selling for 100. I'm the first player, I'm gonna take advantage of that, I'm gonna grab some wood. And uh, you know, the rules actually say to flip these over to indicate they're done, but I don't see why you don't just tap them. Tapping them seems much nicer and easier. So I have gone here, which means I have gotten an extra wood. So I've got two wood now. And now it's Jen's turn. Let's see what she's got. Ah, she's got one of these cards. She's got the Casamento. She definitely wants to build this because this, for the rest of the game, will give her at the end of every round 50 bucks. You know, it's kind of like the 100 bucks I could get for that thing. But it also means she gets an extra action every turn, at the begin or every round. At the beginning of every round, she draws an extra card. So this is very nice. Now this needs a stone and two wood. Remember, she started with one stone and one wood, so she needs some more wood now. And unfortunately, I took the free wood. So now, Jen has, well, she has two other ways she could get wood. I kind of misspoke earlier. There's a total of... Um, three ways you can get resources. You could go, Jen could now go to the market and she could either buy this wood for a hundred or she could go to the market and trade in two other resources, two for one to get a wood. Or the last option, she's gonna do this. She's gonna visit this building. This is a special one where when you go here, you get to trade any one resource for any other resource. So normally going to the market's a two for one, this is a one for one. So Jen is gonna trade one of her resources so she can get another wood because she wants to build a Casamento. This is the wood she's got. She needs the marble as well. So let's just put this marble and wood over here because she knows she's gonna use that to build the Casamento, but she needs another wood. So what is she gonna trade away? Either the metal, the gold, the carpets, or the spices. Let's look at what else she might build. Let's see. These things both need marble, but she's already using her marble and her wood. Um, let's see. Now she might be able to get this built as well, which requires spices and carpets. Um, or she could build this, which requires gold. And oh, this is a guild, which means at the end of the game, she'll get three bonus points for every monument she has built. So maybe she wants to try and get this thing built in addition to her casamento. These are both things that will generate more goods for her for the rest of the game. Both of them need marble. This one needs wood as well. So maybe she doesn't, but she's already, she's already gonna lose her marble and her wood building her casamento. So that means, you know, she probably, let's say she wanted to get this, she wants to build this. Her plan this round is to build this and this, right? So she's already got the marble, she's got one wood. She needs another marble and another metal. So that means she does not want to trade away her marble or her metal. So let's have her trade away uh, her spice, let's say, her spices. Or I'm sorry, not her spices, this is her carpet. She trades that away, she visited this guy trading one for one, so she can get a second wood. 
So there we go. And now Jen's got everything she needs to build that. And she's got the metal she needs to build this. She, all, she still needs marble. Okay, so that was Jen's first action. We've both done one action now. And this little, the, the first player marker doubles as a, as a uh, turn counter. So we move down here on my turn again to indicate we are now doing our second action. Isn't that clever? I thought that was very neat. So for our second action, now, I, well, I've totally forgotten what I was going to do because I was paying attention to Jen. Right, so Jen... Or no, not Jen. Me, me, me. I want to build a couple of these things. Let's see. So I've got the wood I need, and I got my other wood. Where is it? Come here, you. Oh, so many cards. This is much easier when you have two hands, and you just basically hold them all in your hand, as you might imagine. All right, so there's a wood and a wood. And let's see. So I've got all these starter things. I could do any of these. What do I want to be generating over the course of the game? Do I want to generate more money, in which case I have to use a gold and carpet, or do I want to do like more spices and carpet, or more? Which, which of these two am I going to build? Well, if I think about it, remember later on I'm going to want to build the Arta Magi. I'm not going to get to build it this round, but I'm going to want to build this. This, gen although I need gold for that, neither of these things will generate gold for me. But this one generates money, so I think I'm going to set out. Ah, but that's a problem because this requires gold. If I use my gold for this, then I won't have the gold to build that later. But I'm going to go for it anyway. So. I'm gonna to wanna to build a gold, so that means I'm setting these aside to build this, and which am I gonna make carpet, which lets me get more spices, or am I gonna give up a spice to be able to get more carpet in the future? Well, another thing I can look at is, eventually I'm gonna to wanna to start building some of these things. Now, all of these are gonna go away at the end of the round, so I'm not gonna get a chance to build them, but I might wanna start saving up for one of these really big expensive ones. Neither of them need carpet, but this one needs spices, so I think I will choose the one that generates spices for me. Okay, so that means I am going to... This is all just me figuring out what I want to build. So I know this first round I'm going to build these two things. I've got three actions left, and two of them are going to be spent building these two guys. Now, is there anything else I could do with my time? I have one additional action on top of that, and I'd have a spice. If I could get one more wood... I could get a wood, but then I would not be able to build it because I need two more actions. One to get the additional wood and one to build this. So I don't think I'm going to get another chance. So, let's see. But I could start gathering a resource for the future. And, let's see, since I know I want gold for this, I think I am going, and I'm, and I'm using my gold to build this, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to visit this location, which lets me automatically get one gold for free. And I'll have that for later. Okay, so this is all, oops, and I've actually bumped that. All right, so that's all my resources and my money. These are things I'm probably not gonna build. So that was my second action. Jen's second action now, she, let's see. Now, if she's gonna use all this, all right, she needed another marble to be able, sorry, so she's gonna come over here and grab a free marble. Boom, and so now she's got what she needs to build the Bottega. All right, and so these things haven't been built all right, so her second action was get some marble. So now she's got two things she's going to try and build on this first round. Now we move on to the third turn, the third action. And now I'm going to start building the things uh, that I wanted to build because i got two things I want to build. First, I will build, what the heck, I'll build this Bottega. And it goes face up into my area as a reminder that I, at the end of every turn, I get an extra 100 bucks. So that costs me one gold and one wood. Arr, these cards are so hard to pick up on this glass table. So I've now built that. That was my third action. Jen's third action, she's gonna build something as well. She's gonna build her very fancy purple Casamento. That took her two wood and a marble. So there goes the marble and there goes the wood. And she has built this successfully now. On to the fourth action. This is my final action. And I'm gonna build the other thing I wanted to build, which required carpet and a wood. And so I've got two Bottegas, two, uh, two, uh, you know, two bot Bottegas, one that generates spices for me and one that generates money. Okay, that was my last action. Jen's fourth action now, remember she had something else she wanted to build, so she's gonna build this Bottega that generates gold for her and that required her silver and her marble. I think it's called metal, not silver, okay. So, we have both done four actions, but now something else happens. We then go to the next round and we say, hey, has any, does anybody have a Palagio? No, nobody has built a Palagio. Okay, moving on. Has anybody built a Casamento? 
And as it turns out, Jen has. Jen has built a Casamento. This means she now gets to take an action because of her Casamento. So Jen gets five actions, whereas I only get four. So she gets one more action this round. What does she want to do? Is there anything she could build? See, with just these two resources left, I mean, if I look up here at the monuments, ah, uh, you know, if she might have been able to build this this turn. She would have definitely been able to build this. But instead, she opted for this, which will give her more resources. But this would have been worth eight points. That would have been gigantic. And so that's actually interesting, because Jen's got this guild that gives her points, additional points for every monument she's built. So it's kind of a shame she didn't take the opportunity to build a monument. Maybe a bit, a bit short sighted, but all right. So anyway, it looks like she can't afford to build any of these ones that are about to disappear. So she can't build those. She can't build either of these other. Oh, ah, she could almost build this. But it requires a spice, which she has, and a carpet, which she doesn't. Because, ooh, remember she traded in her carpet to get the, um, the marble that she needed when she went, here she traded in the carpet. You know, if she had been a little bit smarter, let's say instead of trading in the carpet, she had traded in, no, 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 I'll just live with it, never mind. So I think I traded in the gold, I've lost track now of who, I think I did this though, didn't I? Because I needed that gold. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Cause I, do I have another gold? Yeah, I do. So let's say Jen, instead of when she visited here, instead of trading in the carpet, sorry, she traded in the gold, right? And so now she's here on her bonus fifth turn. What does she want to do? She wants to build the, uh, uh the Ritterato, uh, the Palazzo de Familia or family palace, this Ritterato. She wants to build that. Oh, wait. Oh, no, okay, she couldn't, oh yeah, all right. So, this requires a spice and a carpet, which she very smartly, I was stupid, but I've changed, I've retroactively decided to be smart. She saved the, uh, both of these left over so she'd be able to build this. She's got the spice and she's got the carpets, but there's something else she needs. You notice none of the other cards we've built so far needed this. This card, in addition to these, also down here, it needs an artist. An artist has to be hired now to help build this palazzo. So Jen's paying the, the spice and the carpet, but now she needs to hire an artist, which is the blue icon. So we come over here and we see, here's all the artists that are available to hire. She could hire Filippo Lippi, uh, Michelangelo, Bar, what his name is. Basically, remember she needed a blue card, so she can hire one of these three guys. And they're different costs. This one costs 150, this one costs 250, and this one costs 250. And now here's the interesting thing. She wants, um, their numbers up at the top indicate how good a job they're going to do. It's random. This guy could have a four, a five, or a six on the other side of him, which means how many victory points he'd score. But we don't know how much it is. So if Jen wants to pay 250, she could be gambling to get a four, five, or a six. On the flip side, probably better to hire this guy because for 250, she could get a four, five, six, or a seven. So if she wants to pay through the nose, she probably wants to hire this guy and hopefully get seven bonus points. Or she could take it easy, she could save 100 bucks for later, and then either get two or three victory points, her choice. Now remember, we started with 300 bucks, so she could afford to hire any of those guys. Yeah, with that, she's gonna take a gamble. She's gonna pay 250 of her 300 starting bucks, Flor Florins or Florinis or whatever they're called, and she's gonna hire Michelangelo here, 250 bucks, and now she's hired him. He works on the plot, so he, she needed him and the th stuff she already paid. And now she flips him and finds out four, five, six, or seven. Oh, the worst it could have been, the lowly four. So basically, this guy worked on the palazzo and has scored Jen six points. She paid through the nose. She didn't get a five. What are the chances? Oh, well, say lobby. So anyway, that was Jen's fifth action. And now we come back over here. Has anybody built a casa? No. So no extra moves. Does anybody have a, what do you call it? a predicatory, which is a monk, a, a priest? Does anybody have one of a priest? Nope. Okay. So now we are all done. The first round is over. And at the end of it, I have built two things. And Jen has built three things by hiring an artist. Okay, but Jen has pretty much gone through everything. She has only 50 bucks left and no resources. I've still got a lot of money and a lot of resources for the next round. Okay, so now we do the end of round stuff. First of all, we discard cards. Any artists that didn't get hired, they're all gone. Any, bill, any monuments, except for the two most expensive, these other ones, they're all gone, all removed from the game. 
and we each have to discard down to one floor. So I've got these three cards left. I have to discard two of them. I think I'm going to hold on to this because remember, this is the one that if I ever build, it gives me three points per workshop I've built. So I'm definitely holding on to this. So I will lose both of these. And they go over here to the discard pile. And this is why I'm holding on. That's what's in my hand at the end of the turn. Jen, she's got two to choose from as well. Let's see. So this one will give her three points, bonus points for every monument she builds. This one will let her generate for the rest of the game one additional silver. So if she gets this built next turn, this is basically worth three um, metal over the course of the rest of the game. Now which one does she want? Now she needs, this is more expensive to build too, it needs two gold and 50. So her, if she wants to build this next round, she's going to need to collect two gold somehow. Whereas this is not, this will be easy to build. Hmm. She's really, what she really got to decide is if she goes, if she builds this guild next round, she is definitely going to want to double down and try to do a lot of monuments. And see, now that's interesting because she's already started down this road of building palazzos because there's this sect collection thing. Jen has built one green. If she builds a matching blue and a gray, for every set of green, blue, and gray cards she builds, by the end of the game, that's worth five bonus points. So she's having to make a decision. Does she want to continue working on the colored cards that will get her set collection bonuses? Or does she want to focus for the rest of the game more on monuments? I think she's, yeah, she's going to hold on to that. She, and so this gets discarded. All right, so we have discarded all our cards. Now we collect our income. And for that, we'll just check this little card. Here's a nice reminder. At the end of every round, everybody always gets 200 bucks, a marble, and a wood. So both Jen and I get a marble and a wood. And 200. Let's see, I get 200. And a marble and a wood. Also, now, whoever is currently the captain of the people, and that's me, I've got the captain card, gets to choose any one resource, and every player gets one of those. So now i got to think, what do I want to build next turn? Well, remember, I already know because I saved a card. Maybe I want to build this, although I'm in no rush to build this. This is not a big rush item for me. I could wait till the end of the game to build this if I just keep holding it in my hand. And I already have a gold and a wood, so I don't really see. Now, maybe I want to eyeball building one of these Monuments, for example. And you know, if I would want to build one of these big ones, 15 points, 18 points. It takes a while to save up for these, but they're worth a ton of points. So maybe I want to grab a marble, because you can see both of them need quite a bit of marble. Or maybe I want to go for something more rare. Maybe I want to get some more, you know, because this one requires less marble, but two metal. Yeah, but like, I'm going to say metal. So I get a metal, and because that's what the captain says, Jen gets a medal as well. Right? And then finally, we can get bonus income based on the cards we've already played. And in my case, I get a bonus 100 bucks and a bonus spices. And Jen, she gets a bonus gold, a bonus 50 bucks, a bonus gold, a bonus 50 bucks. She gets 50 more bucks and a bonus gold. Okay. And let's see. And that was, that was our income. Now we have to elect the captain of the people. Now if somebody had visited this place and taken this card and held onto it, that person would become first player. Nobody did. It was left alone. So what happens is when nobody takes this card, first player goes to the next person in clockwise order. So Jen is going to be first player next turn. If I had wanted to hold on to first player, I could have grabbed this any time as one of my actions and then I'd be first player next turn. But I didn't. So Jen will be first player next turn. And now finally, we reset all the location cards. Everything untaps. All right. And we now move on to the second round where we draw new artists and monuments and new Florenza cards. So for the second round, of which there are five, we draw five more uh, monument cards. There's a, and they get sorted based on value. So the lower value ones are the ones that are more t that tend to get knocked out very quickly, and these high value ones stick around, so you have a better chance of saving up over several turns to build them. Um, one uh, six in a two-player game. Six new artists come out. Three, four, five. Oh wow! No. Let's see, so we got um, architects and we got painters, but no sculptors came out. And that might be a problem. If either of us wants to build anything this turn that requires a sculptor, like, uh, like say, if you, if you just wanted to build this Duomo, 
which require it's an easy one to build too. It only requires two marble and one carpet, and you get nine points. Oh, and two hundred bucks. Still pretty easy. Unfortunately, nobody's going to be able to build it this turn because no sculptors came out. That was a bad bit of luck. There's a sculptor. Their sculptor will be out next round, but it'll be too late for this. And that's another reason you might want to spend an entire turn grabbing one of these because maybe next turn there won't be any available in the color you want. Anyway though, so now we draw our Florenza cards. Everybody gets, we got rid of all of them, so now we get four new ones apiece. And to do that, the, the Florenza decks are divided, there's the decks number one, two, and three. They're numbered one, two, and three. Beginning of the game we got, we drew from the ones. Now for the second round, we take the remaining ones and we shuffle them in with the twos. So we don't know if we're going to get ones or twos. It's actually a really interesting way that the, uh, what do you call it, the draw deck for the Florenza cards kind of evolves over the course of the game. It does a different thing every round. Um, you know, for round two, you mix round one and round two. For round three, you mix round two and, round, and the third decks. For round four, you mix the final deck and all the discards. So everything you've ever discarded has a chance to come back into the game for the final round. Anyway though, so this is shuffled up and now we each get four. One, two, three, four, and because Jen built the Casamento, she gets a bonus one. She gets a fifth. So that means, thanks to the Casamento, not only does Jen get an extra action and 50 bucks, but she also gets more variety, more flexibility on the Florenza card she draws. Okay, and now we start again, and now Jen will be first doing the actions. Remember, Jen gets five to my four. And that was a full round of Florenza. Now, um, there basically just plays through four more rounds, things escalate, you get more stuff, things get going faster, you get more actions, you try to get more stuff done. Let's see, and if you'd like to watch a little bit of that, you can hit the button on screen right now for extended play, where I will demonstrate at least one more round, maybe two. And you know, I'll definitely build some monuments. I might have to use, oh, I, I lied, I lied, I lied, I told a lie. Remember I said no greens came up? That's a problem, but there is still a way you could build this Duomo that requires green. There are the anonymous artists. Anybody who wants could visit this guy, tap him, so only one person can do it. And if somebody goes to him and uses him, he counts as a green, and so you could use him to build this. The only problem is, he gives you no victory points. On the flip side though, he only costs 50 bucks to hire, whereas the guys up there are generally a little bit more expensive. So, oops, sorry about that. There is one green sculptor available to us if we want to build anything with green. Now, let's see, like if I wanted to build this blue, that would require an architect. Oh, if I want to build this, it would require a green. And I might want to build this. This is a very quick and easy thing to build. But anyway, I'm going to worry about that in the extended. So you can hit the button for that or the button for final thoughts. In five, four, three, two, one.